Hello and welcome to my humble steaming kitchen. It is everything that you could expect. Scratched up tables, unwashed dishes, dull knives, broken appliances, fridges dedicated to only beer, random stuff that hasn't been used for years, and terrible lighting. Apologies in advance. Nevertheless, today we're gonna be making three friendly student dinners that were always there for me during my study. So let's get started. Our first recipe is gonna be an improved version of instant ramen by adding in some vegetables and proteins to make it healthier. So let's get to it. We're gonna start by slicing up our green onion, then chop up a small onion of choice. Now is the perfect time to find any vegetables that are sitting in the back of your fridge and you probably forgot about them. Here I have some mushrooms. Cut them up. Put everything in a bowl. I also can recommend adding frozen vegetables. Now that the vegetables are cut, we can move on to the stove and start boiling our eggs. Bring the water to untouchably hot and gently spoon feed the eggs to the water. Let the eggs cook. For medium sized eggs, it would take about six minutes or less. Then dunk them into ice cold water and let them cool down. Then peel the egg and slice it in half. And look at that beautiful yolk. Well, could be better to be honest. Moving on to protein. To add more substance to the dish, add any kind of protein you like, like chicken or tofu. But here I have some breakfast bacon slices that I cut into smaller slices. Then take a pan and put it on medium high heat. And while the pan is still heating up, place those piggy fats on that pan of yours. Cook for five to seven minutes on each side until it becomes crispy and golden. Take it off the stove when you think it's ready. With everything prepared, we can move on to the ramen. More specifically, the flavor packet. Bring about 450 milliliters of water to a boil. Then magically turn the plain water into tasty artificial broth. Let those GMOs do the work for you. Then impatiently dump all your vegetables into the broth and let them hang for about five to seven minutes or until they seem cooked. If the vegetables look ready, bring out the one and only ramen, well, ramen noodles. And make sure it has all the space it needs. Cook the noodles according to the instructions. And now it's time to assemble. Make sure to have a big enough bowl. Then gently place your green onions Tuck in your soft boiled egg, add the crispy bacon. I also sprinkled some optional seaweed flakes. And this is the result. And this is the total. Now, time for the taste test. Our second recipe involves pasta. Did you know that pasta stands for pesto and onion, some zucchini, tomato and feta cheese and mushroom? No, that's odd, because that's exactly what we're gonna make today. You're not good at cooking, but I'm here to help you out. We're gonna start by cooking the pasta. In a small or big pot, depends on your preferences. Generously salt the water with season and bring it to a boil. Now drown your pasta and cook it according to the packaging instructions. While we wait, we can start writing our script. Did you know that pasta stands for... Or cut up some vegetables. One tomato, one small onion, half a zucchini, and some mushrooms. Put everything into an unnecessary bowl, because the cutting board is too small, but it was the cheapest in the store. And lastly, cut up that white brick of cheese into smaller bricks. By now, the pasta should be done. Give it a little taste test, and don't forget to burn your tongue, drain it, and set it aside. Then start off by heating up our flimsy pan on a medium-low heat. Add two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Add all your pre-cut vegetables at once, because we don't care about creating complexity in our flavor. Season with salt, pepper, 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 and garlic dust. Let it cook for five to seven minutes or until the vegetables become soft and seem more edible. Mix occasionally. Then bring in the feta and pasta and cook it for three to four minutes till the cheese melts and everything combines into one. Time to plate it up. If the budget allows it, add dried herbs such as basil or oregano. And for those with mature, mature taste, taste, black olives also fit well into this dish. And finish it all off with just a dash of pesto to make the dish taste pesto times better. And there you go. A warm, easy meal for the lucky ones that are not lactose intolerant. In total, the price is this much. A perfect meal to sit alone in your room and watch YouTube videos to not think about all the decisions you have made so far. McDonald's Big Mac, it's more than just another hamburger. There are two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles and onions on a sesame seed bun. Hey, what's up guys? And welcome back to Binging with uh, Cooking. For the third and final recipe, we're gonna take a look at making an easy version of a Big Mac at home. First things first, the iconic Big Mac sauce. All the measurements are gonna be written in the description. 
First, we're gonna start by adding equal amounts of mayo and ketchup. Then, one and a half tablespoon of paprika, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and one tablespoon of plain boring mustard. Then, go ahead and chop up some tiny pickled cucumbers, also known as tiny pickles. About two tablespoons or more if you like pickles. And don't forget to add a dash of that pickle milk into the mix. Give it a dynamic mix with a spoon and set it aside until ready to be used. Next, we're gonna chop up some fresh lettuce as much as you wanna convince yourself that a burger is healthy. And then cut up those highly processed burger buns and set everything aside. Now, grab your store-bought tightly sealed ground up beef, around 150 grams per patty. Roll it into a big meaty ball and flatten it with a rolling pin or any cylinder shape. And realize that that didn't work, so just shape it into a disc. Now that all the prep work is done, let's move on to the stove. Put the pan on medium-high heat and coat it with a delicious block of gold, or just butter. Gently place your buns onto the pan, burger buns that is. Let them absorb the butter. When they become crispy and golden, or on the verge of burning, put them aside. Now bring the pan to medium-high heat, add a dash of vegetable oil, and introduce your meaty friend to the smoking hot pan. Season generously with salt and pepper. Let it cook undisturbed for three to five minutes on the first side until a deep fried crust forms. Now flip the patty over and top it with cheap American cheese. Carefully add a dash of water and cover the pan with a lid and let the steam melt the cheese. Let it cook for three to five minutes. Now that our patty is done, time to assemble our masterpiece. Let's start by taking our bottom bun, bottom bun, bottom bun, bun, bottom bun, Let's start by taking our bottom bun. Scoop up some of that special sauce, spread it around. Top that with some lettuce and place your cooked cheesy patty on top. Then smack some extra sauce on the top part of the bun and piece it all together. And there you have it. Single Decker Big Mac. Beefy, cheesy, lettucey burger. In total, the price ended up being this much per burger. I also recommend adding fries into the burger. What? Don't judge me. And now the taste test. Hope you enjoyed the video or learned something new. Feel free to like or subscribe, no pressure though. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a lovely day and see you next time!